Hi, I'm Rob Cos and welcome to my shop. If you plan to build solid wood furniture, you have to allow for what we call seasonal movement of wood. I'm gonna show you how to attach a tabletop. Several methods, one in particular that I came up with. Think you're gonna enjoy it, stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you'll receive alerts when we release a new video. And anytime we use a special tool, we'll always leave a description down below. All right, let's get to work. I've got a sample here that we can use as a teaching tool. This is a small low table. I built this 20 years ago. In fact, it's made entirely with hand tools, but that's beside the point. It's made out of cherry. I'm gonna give you the measurements for the top. This is 31 and 3 quarter inches long. And I'm gonna say this, right now, this is 15 and a half inches wide. Now, seasonally, I could expect to see this shrink. It could get maybe as narrow as 15 and 5 sixteenths. And it could expand. It could possibly get close to 15 and 3 quarter. As the surrounding atmosphere loses moisture in those dry times of the year, any moisture in the wood and wanting to reach equilibrium with the atmosphere is going to get off, give off that moisture, and as a result, those shells, cells are going to shrink, and this is gonna pull in. Won't change in its length, will change in its width. And then you come into the humid part of the year, this dry piece of wood is going to wanna, again, reach equilibrium, and it's going to absorb that moisture, and that's gonna cause it to expand. Now, I'm gonna remove the top. Actually, I'm in the process of refinishing this. So we take the top off, Remember, wood doesn't change in its length. It only changes in its width and a little bit in its thickness. So if you look at this frame, this is mostly consisting, comprised of a piece of wood in its length. So this is not going to get any longer. If you look at the end, it's width this way is wood in its length. This is not going to get any wider. So that frame is what we would call, or that base is what we would call very stable. If you attach something that is constantly going to be moving and you don't allow for that movement, something has to give. So either you're going to crack this top piece as it shrinks pulls away, and wants to pull in away from where you've got it fastened or even the opposite way, or it's going to break something in the frame, or it's going to wiggle, cause the method that you, method that you fastened it to come loose and it's gonna be wobbly. And you want this stuff to last to become a piece of antique furniture. You have to allow for that seasonal movement. The idea is you wanna keep it tight, you wanna keep the two pieces tight together, still allowing them to slide a little bit as changes take place. There's lots of methods out there. I'm gonna cover two common ones. And then I'm gonna introduce you at the end to one that I came up with myself. I want something a little bit different, a little more crafty. And I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Okay, I put together a little teaching model. So we've got a piece of pine that's about 10 and 3 quarter inches wide. Yep. We've got a leg and we've got two aprons. So we have to fasten the top to this base or these aprons so that it stays nice and tight. And we know that our movement is going to go this way, but our movement is not going to go this way. On something this narrow, what I would do is I would fasten it right here in the middle that, one of the reasons you want to do that is you want all of the movement to go equal from center. If you don't, it may move all the way over to one side or the other, which is going to throw the look off a little bit. But if we fasten it in the center, we don't have to worry about that. So whatever method I'm going to use, it can be made fast right there in the middle. In fact, it could even be made fast, oh, probably over about a two and maybe even as much as a three inch area without any great amount of movement that you're going to have to worry about. Over here, however we attach this apron to this top, that's where we have to allow for movement. So we're gonna start with the easiest way, we're gonna get a little bit more complicated, and then the last one's gonna save for the best. Now this first method I'm not a big fan of, it involves screws, it's really simple. So let's address this one first. You can see there's a cup in the board, we can pull the cup out. So what I would do is I would probably go in, I'd find the center of this, 10 and 3 quarters, so 5 and 3 eighths. And I would probably go in and put, oh, maybe inch and a quarter in this direction, inch and a quarter in that direction. So if this represented this apron, I would come in here, 
going to put one there and one there. And there's not enough distance there to really worry about it uh, causing a problem. So I'm going to draw a line to represent where we, how we would drill our hole. Now, you've got to use, I, I like to use these screws because they've got a real aggressive thread. You don't have a whole lot of grabbing power in this. This top's only three quarters of an inch. Can't risk getting too close to the surface. So let's say we can put five eighths of an inch of the screw into the wood. So mark this with a Sharpie. So we can go about that far. So if we look at it like this, the first problem you're going to notice, because most people aren't going to have access to four inch long screws, we've got to drill a hole all the way down from the bottom edge. So remember, this, this is the one that we don't have to worry about movement. So we're going to drill right to about there. So here we're going to want to drill a hole that is the size of the outside diameter of those threads. And that measures just under 3 16 of an inch. So right here, we'd have a hole approximately 3 16 Now it's got to come all the way down from the top. Now before we do that, we've got to allow for that head. And I'm going to suggest on softwoods like this in particular that you're going to want to put a washer underneath there. And this washer measures a half an inch. Actually, we could get away a little bit smaller. I'm trying to avoid too much, uh, too much change because we're going to do this one a little bit differently. Let's say we use that one. And the diameter of that is 7 16 of an inch. So our first move before we drill that hole is to, build, is to drill one that is going to be 7 16 of an inch in width. We're going to come right down to here. Then we'll go in with our drill bit that's just under 3 16 and we will finish the hole from here on. We'll go in, put our washer on, put our screw down in there, and because there's no grab of the threads in this apron, it'll pull this tight and get rid of that gap. Now, on softwood like this, I'd probably put a clamp on there to help hold it tight until the screws are in place. Put two screws in, that'll stay put. Don't have any worries there. This one's going to be a different story. This is where we have to allow for the movement. And what I'm going to suggest in this circumstance is we're, this last hole that we drill is going to be larger diameter than this. And that's going to allow for some side-to-side -side movement. Now, in doing that, I always worry about putting something like that into the wood, that's going to actually pull into the wood a little bit, which is not going to allow for very much movement. So I like to use two washers. This one actually has a washer built in underneath the head. So by putting that second washer in, if this washer gets embedded in the wood just because of the nature of the wood and how tight you've made the screw, it still is going to allow that to slide with relative ease. And between that and a little bit of flex you're going to have in your screw, you're probably going to be all right. So let's go over to the drill press and actually do one so you can see exactly how this would be done. We're going to use a half inch for that washer. We're going to use, oh, what should we use? Let's go with 530 seconds, which is right in the middle. That should be, that should allow this to move. Actually, no, sorry, that's wrong. In this case, we need to allow a larger diameter hole so that this can actually move. We want it to be secure to the top, but it's got to fit in a hole that's going to allow for it to move. Now it's got to be less than the half inch, but I'm going to suggest we probably are going to want to go quarter of an inch. The first thing you're going to notice is we're removing a lot of this apron, and that's the part I don't like. And as I said, you really aren't going to find a four inch screw very easily. These type of bits don't do a very great job of clearing shavings, so you have to excavate that quite often. Okay, so we've cut all the way down. Now I'm just eyeballing the bit in the center of that hole. Now, that's a tight fit, but it'll go down in there. I'll use something a little bit bigger to hammer to get it sink that right to the bottom. 
Okay, I've got the washer to seat down in there. It's gonna give me a nice, good, solid footing for this screw. We'll drop the screw in and get it to fit in the hole. Now we've got, and that's a good coarse thread, so it works well on soft woods or particle board or MDF. It's about 9 sixteenths of an inch projection. When we fasten that in, we'll allow, it allows us to pull the apron nice and tight to the underside of the table. And between the oversized hole and just the fact that you've got that much screw, it's gonna give you a fair bit of movement. It should never be a problem. It'll keep it nice and tight. Spacing, I probably would have done right, one right here. And of course over there and maybe every seven or eight inches, that would be fine. That's not a hard process, but what I don't like is you've reduced the strength of this piece down to an eighth of an inch on either side for about halfway. Not a huge deal, but there are better ways to do it. But this one is a quick one and doesn't take a whole lot of equipment. Okay, this next method I think is a lot better than screwing it in. Uh, it's not difficult. So what it involves is a block of wood. You can actually get something similar to this in metal, but we're gonna do, our, do ours out of wood. You want this to be a piece of hardwood, regardless of what the rest of the project is made out of. I think this needs to be hardwood. We're gonna cut a slot, and this piece is going to fit into the slot. You can screw and glue this to the underside of the table. Depending on where it goes, this may or may not be screwed into the slot, but in situations where you don't want it to, where you don't want it to move, you'll glue it. In situations where you allow for the expansion, it's just a dry fit, but it's a good secure way of holding it in place. So okay, I'm gonna I've got my apron. Remember, now we've got to treat this as two different types. One's gonna be on the end and one's gonna be on the side. But we're gonna take our button. Now we need to draw out how we're gonna do this, or at least where we're going to start and stop. Um, let's say this is going to be an inch wide, so we'll come in here and on that one, We'll do it an inch. I'm just gonna put some marks on here. Now I'm using a, a small router. I added a fence to it. And I've got, the, I've got a quarter inch diameter straight bit. And I've got it set so that it's approximately where the top of this would be. So if, the, if your apron is softwood, then you're gonna to wanna to stay away from the edge. Remember, what we're talking about is cutting a slot in here, so if you cut it down here, there's just not enough material left underneath there and that wouldn't give you much strength. So hardwood, you can be a lot closer, which means you can lower the profile of this button, but for softwood, you're gonna to wanna to get up in here somewhere so that you can get a little more mass underneath it and make for a stronger application. So I've got mine set so it's the top of the, the, top of the slot is going to be three quarters of an inch. I actually put this on the wrong side. Now we'll drop that down and go between them. And as far as depth goes, the apron is three quarter and I'm cutting about seven sixteenths. Remember, we only need to worry about maybe an eighth of an inch movement on something like this. Now if you want to, you can square that up with a chisel, or if you want to do it precisely, you can use a mortising chisel. That one's actually too wide. So I will grab a, I've got a 3 16 mortising chisel. In fact, you could cut the whole thing with a mortise chisel if you didn't have a router. So now that would be in position. If this, this is one that's going to be on the side. So our, our top is going to move like this. So the button, which is going to be attached to the top, is going to want to slide in and out of that hole. So you have to make sure that you leave enough space in the bottom of that. So in other words, you don't want to sink that all the way. Now, I suggest if you're going to make one of these, you want a piece of material long enough so that you've got some mass to it. You don't want to be trying to process something small like that. Last thing you want to do is actually cut that and make it that little short piece. So I'm going to do this on the bandsaw. And I'm just going to mark that so we get some idea where we need to be.
and we're in there. Let me just check the depth of that slot. It's seven sixteenths of an inch. So we'll cut this. Uh, let's go nine sixteenths. Now I'm going to do that over in the bandsaw. Now I've got my shooting board and plane set up at the other end of my bench. I'm going to clamp this in place so that I know it's being held tight because when this fits, I want this to have the apron pulled tight to the underside of the tabletop. So we need to take a little bit of material off of the top in order to get that to fit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that around and just work on planing that. Okay, that fits in there. Now how are we for widths? It's a little bit too wide. Okay, at this stage, we've got to get that to sit. Actually, that's looking pretty good. Now all we need to do is cut this. I want to leave enough material back here so that I can get a screw in there and there's, it's not going to compromise the strength of this piece. I need a fair bit of surface area here that will glue and screw to the underside, so I'll make it right about there. Now you can do that on the chop saw. Or if you've got a, a bench hook, just use your crosscut saw. Okay, so this is where we have to calculate how much we're going to expose and how much, how deep in we're going to sink that. So we know that that is 7 sixteenths of an inch deep. So it's going to bottom out right there. Factor in how much you think it might expand. Factor in the time of year. In other words, is this, is, is this high moisture content or low? Well, do the math on that and make sure you leave enough in the bottom and then a little extra to be sure. But you also don't want it pulling out. The whole idea is to keep the tabletop tight to the apron. So when you determine how far, let's say we go in to there. Sink that right to there. Now we need one screw. And the glue is what's going to uh, do the best job of holding it in place. I'm not always satisfied with just mechanical fastener, but it acts as a good clamp while the glue is drying. that into the depth that we want. We would have already applied the glue. Fasten that in place. And that'll hold. It'll do a great job of holding. So this is the one that you're going to use that is on the apron that is parallel to the length. That's going to allow for it to move in and out. On this side, what we would do a little bit different, the one, if we were going to put three here, one here, one here, and one in the middle, the one in the middle is the one that's going to control the expansion so that it is equal from center. So that one would go into a hole just like this that doesn't allow for any side to side movement. The ones we do over here and over here, we have to make, we need to make that slot big enough that as this 
top moves, it's going to allow the button to slide side to side without ever offering any resistance that might cause a split. So the ones on the outside here where we're going to see the most amount of movement, long slot, narrow button, one in the middle, button and slot, same size. One, and this one can be sunk right to the bottom, although it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but you could actually make this go right into the bottom of that slot. And the ones over here are going to be the same width as the button, but you have to make sure that the slot is deeper than the amount of projection into the button, or pardon me, the amount of projection of the button into the slot, so that as it comes in and out, it'll still keep it nice and tight. That's a great system. Okay, for this one, we have a new apron. We need a piece of dowel. Now, I'm going to use a half inch just because it's going to give me a little more surface area. I've got a half inch Forstner bit set up in the uh, drill press. And what we're going to do is we are going to drill a hole, not 360 degrees, but a portion of a hole or along the top, along the, uh, what will be the top edge of this apron. And then that is going to allow us to put a segment of dowel into the hole. And actually I'm gonna show you the rest. First thing we're gonna do is go over to the drill press and we've gotta have our fence set up so that it'll support our, p our, our piece of work. If we didn't have a fence on here, there's a chance that the, uh, the drill bit may push out like this and escape out the side. Of course, that also depends on how much, you're, how much you're taking off or how much of the circle you're actually going to leave in this piece. You can see from a cut I already made how much is going to be exposed up here and how wide the dowel is going to be. Now, this is going to make a lot more sense in a moment. Now, we can do this one of two ways. I'm going to show you the first where we don't see anything from the outside. don't need to go any deeper than that. I'm going to go about an inch and a half. <clears throat> so we'll measure an inch and a half on the dowel. You can buy dowel or you can make your own. I prefer to make my own. It tends to be closer to being round. Now, if this is going to be on this side, this is, uh, this is allowing for the expansion and contraction of the top, which means this piece is going to be screwed and glued to the top. It's going to fit into the hole, dry fit. Can't go all the way to the bottom because you have to have an allowance for that movement. But what we'll do is sink that in, and you want, a, you want a good snug fit so that it'll keep it tight, meaning keeping the tabletop tight to the apron. Uh, we can go a little bit. Remember, I'm working right now in what would be the uh, more humid time of the year, so this isn't going to expand much more, so I'm going to leave about that much at the bottom. <clears throat> now, we would do that on all of the aprons. Actually, I do this, drill the holes, assemble the base, and then before you put the top on, I'm going to come in with my plane, and I'm going to plane this flat on the top, so I'm referencing my plane on the apron. Okay, that's flush. Now, that would flip over, and we would need to go in and drill a hole in order to glue this. And you don't want to be out too close to the end, and nor do you want to interfere with the expansion, so I'm going to go right about here. And probably best to start that with an awl so that your drill won't wander on the top of that dowel. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either use a, a flat head, a small diameter uh, pan head screw, or you can actually countersink that. Problem is the countersink is you gotta go down quite deep in order for the entire countersink to be in wood other rigid part of it sticking out on either side. 
So I'll get the drill set up and we'll drill that. Well, I couldn't find a flathead small enough, so I'm going to use a number six by three quarter. Of course, we would have to glue this. And lock that in place. Now, as it moves, as the, as the board moves, this will float in, this will go in and out without any obstruction, keeps it nice and tight. Now, depending on how big the table is, that would determine how many of these you're going to use. So this is what you would do along the stretcher that's parallel to the tabletop. Over here, you're going to, you've got a little bit of a limitation because you can't allow for movement like you can with the buttons that we did earlier. So what I would do on something as narrow as this, let's say this top is 12 inches wide. Well, you could go three or you could go two, but you gotta keep them fairly close together. You really can't put it out here and here because that's gonna defeat the purpose. So I would put one in the middle, the one in the middle keeps, and I would, I would actually glue and screw it not only to the top, but into the hole as well. That's gonna keep all the movement going equal distance from center. And then I would put, depending on how wide this is, I would come out maybe an inch and a half in either direction. And I would put two more in there. And what that's going to do is going to keep enough pressure by having three of them fairly close together. It's gonna to keep enough pressure to take any copper bow out of your top and hold it fast. If you've got another dowel right up here on either side, that's gonna be enough to hold this end in tight to the apron and you'll be fine. So it's a nice, neat system. There's one more version of it that uh, I think you're gonna like. So let me clean off the bench and we're gonna do that and that'll wrap this up. Well, I, when I developed this idea for holding a tabletop or a, it's a chair seat to the frame, the original idea was to have it go all the way through. So here's how we would do that. Same idea, only this time we're going to drill all the way down. Remember those Forstner bits aren't great at clearing shavings, so you need to go up and down. So there's our, there's the, uh, the show side. So now I'm gonna cut another piece of dowel. This time I've gotta cut it a little bit longer. I wanna have at least an inch on the inside and we'll go, we'll go two and a quarter. Okay, now I think what I'll do first is cut a chamfer on this. Then I can finish this off. Okay. Now we put this all the way through. Need to determine how much of it you want to see. Now we can go ahead and oh, we'll drill it on here. But now what that would do, I mean you've got to put a put a bit a finish on there, it'll really make that stand out. In fact, if you're going to do it, you really need to have a contrast. However, you could even use a lighter colored wood because the end grain always stands out dark. But that makes a feature of something that becomes very functional. Anyway, there's three ways of holding solid wood tops on. Hope they helped. 
Uh, if you like my work, if you like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. And I've always said, better tools make it a whole lot easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools, and also talk to you about our online and in-person workshops. Good luck in your woodwork.